Magna Carta is Latin for Great Charter. Anywhere that there is a written constitution that has actual force and effect, the hand of Magna Carta is in play. In form, it is simply an agreement between King John I and a group of barons who were in open rebellion against him at the time. In substance, it embodies the idea that the king and the government are not above the law. And so with that, it blazed the path forward to the idea of rule of law in modern government. King John agreed to Magna Carta in 1215. Successive kings would be required to agree again to Magna Carta's terms, typically in times of later turmoil, usually to support requests for a new set of taxes that the king at the time wanted. Parliament wasn't even in existence at the time, but eventually, with Parliament in place in the 14th century, in 1354, it enacted a statute codifying Magna Carta and making clear that action would be taken only according to due process of law. Of Magna Carta's guarantees, only three remain on the books in England to this day. One states that the English church shall be free and shall have her rights entire and her liberties inviolate. There are rights given to the city of London and towns that they shall have all of their ancient liberties held intact. The most important is one that forever placed King John and his successors within the rule of law. The king agreed that he would only take certain action against the persons in his kingdom, mainly the nobles, that he would not seize them, he would not imprison them, he would not exile them without it being according to a jury of their peers or by the law of the land. And that became what we know as due process of law. Going into 1776, having petitioned George III many times, we were asking simply that we would be allowed to observe our birthright as Englishmen and be accorded our rights. When King George refused that, that is the point in time at which our founders decided revolution was the only way to secure and thereafter protect our rights. That is what we see translate into guarantees that we have now in our Fifth Amendment and our Sixth Amendment as to rights of personal liberty and also rights to speedy trial and not taking property without due process of law. The barons probably didn't believe that they were shaking the frame of government to its very foundations. Instead, they simply wanted King John to observe limits to royal power that his predecessors had observed. One of the greatest lessons taught by Magna Carta is the idea of repetition. Rights must be recognized to be respected. And their repetition educates not just the people, but the king, and puts limits on his power. And so the same is true for any government. Repeating and recognizing those rights is important. By 1461, nine successive monarchs had confirmed Magna Carta over 40 times. These early repetitions ensured that the crown would not forget, but must respect the limits that were being placed on his prerogative. That is a lesson that our founders learned when drafting the Constitution and when enshrining our rights in a Bill of Rights in a context of separated powers where the government does not have the ability to simply forget or ignore the rights that are due to the American people. Magna Carta has come to symbolize and really be one of the signal steps on the path towards the rule of law in England, in America, and in many nations around the world.